It was an ecstasy, an ecstasis that lasted hours and placed the seal of completion on all of my previous life. At the end, I felt reborn, but as what, I knew not. In the gray light of a false dawn, and I should say I wasn't loaded, I was insomniac. In the gray light of a false dawn, the wave of internal imagery faded away. I rose from where I had been sitting for hours and stretched. The sky was clear, but it was still very early and stars were still shining dimly in the west. In the southeast, the direction toward which my attention had been focused, the sky was clear except for a line of fog or ground mist lying parallel to the horizon only a few feet above the treetops on the other side of the river, perhaps a half mile away. As I stretched and stood up on the flat stone where I had been sitting, I noticed that the line of fog seemed to have grown darker and now seemed to be churning or rolling in place. I watched very carefully as the rolling line of darkening mist split into two parts, and each of these smaller clouds also divided apart. It took only a minute or so for these changes to be executed, and I was now looking at four lens-shaped clouds of the same size lying in a row and slightly above the horizon, only a half mile or so away. A wave of excitement swept through me, followed by a wave of definite fear. I was glued to the spot, unable to move, as in a dream. As I watched, the clouds recoalesced in the same way that they had divided apart, taking another few minutes. The symmetry of this dividing and rejoining and the fact that the smaller clouds were all the same size lent the performance an eerie air as if nature herself were suddenly the tool of some unseen organizing agency. As the clouds recoalesced, they seemed to grow even darker and more opaque. As they all became one, the clouds seemed to whirl inward like a tornado or a water spout and it flashed into my mind, perhaps it was a water spout, something I still have never seen. But even as the thought formed, I heard a high-pitched, ululating whine, whee, 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 come drifting over the jungle treetops, obviously from the direction of the thing I was watching. I turned and gave one glance at the river house seventy feet behind me and up the steep hill, gauging whether I had time to run and awaken someone to get confirmation of what was happening. To arouse someone I would have had to go hand over hand up the slope and consequently take my eyes off the thing I was watching. In the space of an instant I decided that I could not cease observing. I tried to shout but no sound came from my fear-constricted throat. The siren sound was rapidly gaining pitch, and in fact everything seemed to be speeding up. The moving cloud was definitely growing rapidly larger, moving straight toward the place where I was. I felt my legs turn to water and sat down, shaking terribly. For the first time, I really believed all that had happened to us, and I knew that the flying concrescence was now about to take me. Its details seemed to solidify as it approached. Then it passed directly overhead at an altitude of about 200 feet, banked steeply upward, and was lost from sight over the edge of the slope behind me. In the last moment before it was lost, I completely threw open my senses to it and saw it very clearly. It was a saucer-shaped machine, rotating slowly with unobtrusive, soft, blue and orange lights. As it passed over me, I could see symmetrical indentations on the underside. It was making the whee, whee, whee sound of science fiction flying saucers. My emotions were all in a jumble. At first I was terrified, 
But the moment I knew that whatever was in the sky was not going to take me, I felt disappointment. I was amazed and I was trying to remember what I had seen as clearly as possible. Was it real in the naive sense in which that question is asked of UFOs and tables and chairs? No one else saw this thing as far as I know. I alone was its observer. I believe that had there been other observers, they would have seen what I had seen. But as for real, who can say? I saw this thing go from being a bit of cloud to being a rivet-studded aircraft of some kind. Was it more true to itself as cloud or aircraft? Was it a hallucination? Against my testimony can be put my admitted lack of sleep and our involvement with psychedelic plants. Yet curiously, this last point can be interpreted in my favor. I am familiar by direct experience with every known class of hallucinogen. What I saw that morning did not fall into any of the categories of hallucinated imagery I am familiar with. Yet also against my testimony is the inevitable incongruous detail that seems to render the entire incident absurd. It is that as the saucer passed overhead, I saw it clearly enough to judge that it was identical with the UFO with three half spheres on its underside that appears in an infamous photo by George Adamski, widely assumed to be a hoax. I had not closely followed the matter, but I accepted the expert opinion that what Adamski had photographed was a rigged up end cap of a 1937 Hoover vacuum cleaner. But I saw this same object in the sky above La Chirera. Was it a fact picked up as a boyhood UFO enthusiast? Something as easily picked out of my mind as other memories seem to have been? My stereotyped but already debunked notion of a UFO suddenly appears in the sky by appearing in a form that casts doubt on itself, it achieves a more complete cognitive dissonance than if its seeming alienness were completely convincing. It was, if you ask me, and there is no one else really that you can ask, either a holographic image of a technological perfection impossible on earth today or it was the manifestation of a something which in that instance chose to begin as mist and end as machine, but which could have appeared in any form a manifestation of a humorous something's omniscient control over the world of form and matter. And I flash forward two paragraphs. In the previous paragraph, I had, had been discussing mirages. And I said an ordinary mirage is something that we see in space that isn't there. Could there be mirages in time? In other words, could there be reflections of distant technologies that haunt space the way images of distant cities haunt, uh, or time haunts space. I believe that this latter comes close to the mark. The UFO is a reflection of a future event that promises humanity's eventual mastery over time, space, and matter. We, in our clumsy attempt to probe these mysteries, we meaning my brother and myself, uh, were able to coax nature into throwing out this great burning scintilla of pure contradiction from the dark retort where she labors over the chemistry of the millennium. That we were able to do this is full of import. It meant to me that we were on the right track. 